no, 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 stop this. The vlog started off as a technical one, but Hereford put paid to that. Let's start again with a summary of what happened. The saga of the engine management light started back in February when we were on our way to Arran. We were already over the Scottish border when this happened. Luckily, we had the Fiat Roadside Assistance Service that was extended from two years up to five years. So, I give them a ring. So, good news. The RAC guy has reset the, um, the fault code. And as long as, if it does come back, as long as it's not flashing or going red, then we're okay to, uh, to drive. So, we continue with our Aaron trip. And it's not until we're coming back from that, uh, somewhere around the Edinburgh area, that we hit a problem again. So the uh, warning light was on and off for a couple of weeks. Uh, so I thought I'd better get it booked into one of the Fiat professional dealers to have a look at this specifically. So join me as I take Merlin in to get him fixed, but also to get a look at Hereford. Good morning. I'm off to Hereford. As you can see, I'm on my own this morning. Ellie's on dog patrol. And I'm on Fiat Ducato dealer patrol. So we're heading to Hereford to uh, booked into the Fiat dealer there so that they can have a look at why this uh, uh, um, engine check engine management light keeps coming on um, problem is it's gone off now <laughs> so there is no light on now so I hope they can still work it out from that the RAC guy told me that uh, they will be able to look at the history, so I'm hopeful that they'll know. The general consensus of opinion is that it needs a new, well, a lot of people are saying DPF filter, a um, DPF sensor, which may or may not be right, because all my issues have been linked to oil. So, we'll see what they say. Well, I have to say, Ellie, that's a lovely cup of coffee you made me. It's been a good little trip, really. No, no traffic at all. Luckily, this uh, garage is um, our side of Hereford, so I haven't got to go into the town. I mean, Suzuki, Renault, Dacia, and uh, Fiat. It's not clear really where where to go, so I better get out and have a walk round. So the helpful people in reception were expecting me. That's always a good start. And while the mechanics take Merlin into their workshop, uh, I'm offered a courtesy lift down into Hereford, uh, which I'm going to have a look round. I'm going to film a few bits and pieces in Hereford. I wasn't really expecting to do this, but it's a great opportunity to take you guys along with me. It's good to see the uh, Fiat mechanics are taking good care of Merlin, getting him into the bay there. We'll let them get on with it. My original thought was to have a look at the architecture and uh, obviously the cathedral but uh, I found out that there is in fact a market on a Wednesday so I was having a look around that to start with. I was so early that some of the traders were still setting up their stalls. This is the Hereford Bull. It's a 1.6 metre bronze statue created by a guy called Brian Alabaster. The sculpture was unveiled in uh, 2012 and is an exact replica of a Hereford bull. 
The bull is often used as a meeting point for people. This beautiful building is St Francis Xavier Church. It's a neoclassical style church and it was built in 1839. At the time it cost £16,000 to build. If I had a bit more time I definitely would have gone in. This beautiful building is a Hereford Museum and Art Gallery. It was originally opened as a free library and museum in 1874. Right, time to have a look round the cathedral. There have been religious buildings on this site for well over 1300 years. I was very lucky because it's so early in the morning, I was the only person in there for most of the time. This is not intended as a history lesson, just enjoy the beautiful building. Restoration is obviously a huge part of this beautiful building. There are permanent stonemasons on site as there's so much work to be done.
this was absolutely fascinating to watch. These are some of the buildings from the famous Hereford Cathedral School. As well as the market, uh, the cathedral and the beautiful buildings that we've already seen, there are some wonderful little streets with uh, wonderful little artisan shops. Cafes and bars were also very, very plentiful. This cheese shop piqued my interest. Very sorry Ellie, I couldn't see any vegan stuff here at all. Many of the plentiful churches here seem to diversify into other areas. This one, All Saints is a cafe as well as an open church. Now I could murder a cup of coffee, and old Bill here looks a friendly sort, so I'm going to try his place out. I was really fascinated with the way they improvised and modernised this uh, cafe part of the church, so I took my coffee upstairs. Well, I did manage to refrain from ordering a piece of cake or a sausage roll, but, well, you guessed it. It was talking to me. What else was I supposed to do? It was absolutely delicious. And of course, the wholemeal roll even made it a healthy option. Well, by now, the garage had phoned me and uh, they were sending Dave along to pick me up. So the rest of this uh, video here in Hereford is a bit of a whistle-stop tour. I most definitely want to come back here again with Ellie. This is the River Wye, but I suspect most of you already knew that. This makes its way down to the uh, Severn Estuary, right by my front door in fact. Well, Newport anyway. And there's the cathedral in the distance. Beautiful building. And my last glimpse of Hereford was the Town Hall. And then, exactly on time, Dave turns up to take me back to the garage, which is uh, out of town. Well, a fair bit's happened since uh, I last spoke to this camera. Um, I hope you enjoyed the look round uh, Hereford. What a lovely place. And the garage were, were unbelievable. They gave me a courtesy car down into Hereford and a courtesy car back as well. But that's not what you want to hear about. You want to hear about what's wrong with the van, don't you? Well, they've had to put on order an oil pressure release valve. Um, so there was actually a fault with it. It wasn't a sensor problem. It was actually a fault. Uh, I think it's quite a minor fault because uh, the light keeps going back out and when the RAC guy tested the pressure, it was a, a, a straight line, so there was no problems with the pressure. But um, they reckon about a week for the part, so they're going to give me a ring next week to, to get Merlin back in. Anyway, time to head off home. 
I'll just message Ellie to let her know I'm on the way and uh, I'll give you an update uh, next week. Well, in fact, I can give you an update right now. Um, they came back to me. They had got the part in, as they said they would, but um, I had to delay it um, because the garage who were repairing the bodywork from when Merlin was vandalised um, have come back to me and I've got a, and Merlin is currently in with them so um, this is booked in to get this valve replaced but I'll do an update uh, when that's been done. I hope you've enjoyed this slightly different vlog from us. Um, apologies there were no dogs in it. Apologies that Ellie wasn't in it. You've had to put up with me the whole time. So all the usual stuff please like and subscribe and uh, have a look at our Facebook group, Wizard in the Wild, if you want to join that. And thanks so much for watching. And for those that love the canines, there is a, a link in the description below if you want to buy the dogs a treat. That's through the uh, Buy Us A Coffee. I hope you've had a great Bank Holiday Monday and uh, we'll catch you next Friday where we should be resuming with our Aaron series. Thanks.